Hello and welcome to the Simple Health Sessions. This is episode two and today's episode is all about sugar. So what's so bad about sugar? Why is sugar being demonised at the moment? I'm going to cover all of that in this week's session. So quick introduction, I'm Rachel. Collins and I'm an integrative nutrition health coach. Now what that means is that I help people to become happier, healthier and more successful in life all by changing what we put in our minds and in our mouths. So today's session is all about sugar. What is so bad about sugar? If you've ever wondered why sugar is being demonised at the moment, this is the video for you. If you are watching me live, do say hi in the comments. Just, just write live or write hi. Um, and if you've got any questions along the way, do post them. I may not be able to answer them in the video, but I always come back and check afterwards and answer them then. So, let's talk about sugar. Um, it's, it's got a lot of press at the moment. What is so bad about sugar? Well, you might be forgiven for thinking that sugar um, has something to do with calories and making us, us obese and fat. And in a way that's true in that sugar really, really does have a big impact on our weight, but it's not to do with calories. So what is sugar all about? What are the risk factors in having too much sugar in our diet? Well, the main things are obesity, diabetes, but you're also gonna come across, if you've got too much sugar in your diet, a whole load of hormonal problems as well. Hi, jo Hi Joanne, lovely to see you on here. Thanks for joining me live. Um, so you're looking at obesity, diabetes, and a whole load of hormonal problems as well, because sugar isn't just calories. So we hear this phrase quite a lot. If you're consuming too much sugar, you're consuming empty calories. The issue with sugar isn't the calorific content. Um, when it comes to sugar, you're looking at around uh, four calories per gram. That's less than half what you'll find in fat, um, which by the way is why fat was demonized so long ago, because it's so high in calories. But to be honest, we're, we can't see our bodies as, as a mathematical equation. It's not as simple as the amount of calories you put in, the amount of calories you burn, and then you know what you're left with is how much you gain or lose weight. It doesn't work like that. We're biological creatures, we're not mathematical creatures. So it's more about the impact of everything else on your body. And sugar has a huge, huge impact on our hormones. And that is where all the issues lie. So what kind of impact can it have? Well, we are hearing more and more about the connection between sugar and obesity. Why is that? What's that all about? Well, it's all down to hormones. When we consume sugar, sugar gets into our bloodstream. Um, and I'm gonna oversimplify this, so if there are any kind of nutrition biology geeks out there, I apologize for oversimplifying it, but I want to make this information accessible for everybody. When we consume sugar, it's, it puts sugar into our bloodstream. The only way that can be moved out of our bloodstream and into our cells so we can use it, because we do need to use some sugar, we need sugar, our brains thrive on sugar, your brain now is, is using sugar in order to kind of have the energy to process all the information that I'm giving you right now. So to move that sugar from our blood into our cells, we need a hormone called insulin. And in order to do, when the sugar hits the bloodstream, um, the, the hormone insulin will be released into your bloodstream as well to move that sugar to where it needs to go. Now, if you have a really sharp spike in sugar, that's going to follow with a, an equally large spike in insulin and that will quickly move all the sugar out of your bloodstream. Now, if you've had a really, really quick high spike of sugar, you're gonna have a really, really quick high spike of insulin, and that insulin level will not drop off as quickly as the sugar. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be left with more insulin in your blood than you need, and what that's going to do is then cause you to kind of have even less sugar in your blood than you want. Now, this sounds really complicated. It's, it's all about the kind of balance between the hormones and the sugar in your blood. And what happens then, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this, you eat something really, really sugary, and then a little while later you have a sugar crash, or you suddenly become really tired and lethargic, and you're like, right, time for a cup of coffee and a cake. <laughs> Who's experienced that one? What's happened there is that insulin has stayed in your blood, and it's gotten rid of too much sugar and it's made you feel really, really low. 
And what can start to happen when we're experiencing lots and lots of insulin in the blood, when we're having lots of these peaks and troughs of insulin sugar followed by insulin and then up and down and up and down and up and down, we start to develop a resistance to the insulin, which means we need to put even more insulin into our body. And the other thing that insulin is really, really important for, or has a really important role to play, is the conversion of sugar to fat. So when you've got too much insulin in your blood, you're going to be turning all of that sugar into fat. And that is a very simplified version of how sugar is making us fat. Insulin is the only hormone that can turn things into fat. So if you're eating lots of sugar, you're creating lots of insulin, which means you're turning lots, you're creating lots of fat cells. So that is how sugar is connected with obesity. And it's that insulin resistance, that kind of almost dulling of our receptors to insulin that is responsible for diabetes. And that's where diabetes kind of comes into the whole sugar discussion. Now obviously, um, obesity for so many reasons is really, really unhealth unhealthy um, and diabetes we know is really, really nasty thing for anyone um, to, be, to be battling with. Now this is the, the type 2 diabetes that I'm talking about here in terms of um, sugar. The other thing though that happens once we've gone through this process of starting to put on fat cells, or starting to accumulate fat cells, is fat cells have an impact on our hormones as well, and it's not insulin. Fat cells actually produce estrogen. Now, estrogen dominance, or having too much estrogen compared to other hormones, is one of the biggest problems that women are facing today. And in fact, an awful lot of men are facing this as well. Have you seen the men that are getting that little bit tubby, their skin's getting softer, what men are getting more emotional? That is nothing to do with, you know, people going soft these days or anything like that. It's not about, I don't know, they're putting something in the water. It's because we're accumulating too many fat cells and it's because of this um, interaction with insulin. Um, I, I won't go into all of the details about how it affects men because it does affect men slightly differently um, and it's predominantly women who are watching here anyway. But just know that your fat cells are producing estrogen and most of us have already got too much estrogen in our body. Now if you are experiencing estrogen dominance you're going to notice this in things like PMS. It's going to make you feel more moody in the run up to your period. It's going to give you tender breasts. Um, it's going to give you potentially, when it gets kind of worse, it's going to give you heavier periods, maybe even fibroids or fibrocystic breasts. I mean, it really has a big, big impact. The other thing that you might start to, to get towards is because of this imbalance then with testosterone, um, uh, sorry, the imbalance with estrogen, it starts to impact your testosterone levels. And it's actually testosterone levels when they're surging that are responsible for things like PCOS so or polycystic ovarian syndrome. So you can see this suddenly we've gone from eating too much sugar, putting on a bit too much weight, to having some quite serious hormonal difficulties, um, having some quite serious disease like diabetes. And the other thing is that way, way, way down the line, when your hormones have been out of balance for a very long time, you are getting to the point where you're at risk of hormonally, hormonally modulated cancers. So things like breast cancer. So it's really, really important actually that we get the whole sugar thing right. Because, and, and again, it's not because of the calorific intake associated with sugar. Sugar, on the grand scheme of things, isn't that high in calories. It's all about the impact that it has on your hormones. So it's really important that we kind of get our heads around how to, to consume sugar and consume it safely. Because it's not all bad. And as I've said earlier, your body needs sugar. Sugar is part of our energy. It needs glucose. Our brain thrives on sugar. It does really, really well on it. But we don't want to be consuming what we call free sugars. So um, 
they're, they're kind of the, the sugars that have been isolated out from fruits and vegetables and things. So a free sugar is like the white granulated sugar you might stir into your coffee or into your tea. Um, it could be the honey that you pour on top of your cereal. It's the added sugars that are in your drinks and your breakfast cereals and the ready meals and everything else. We're not talking about the sugars that are in your in a carrot, for example. And there are sugars in pretty much everything. Um, so before I go on to kind of what we should be consuming around sugar, I just want to touch on this idea that there is sugar in everything, because um, I know a lot of people really struggle with this concept, you know, what, what is sugars and, and where do carbohydrates fit into all of this and should we be low carbing and should we be avoiding all carbohydrates and should we be going into ketosis and the paleo diets, I mean there's so many different names for all the different diets out there and it can get really, really confusing. Now. Carbohydrates um, do turn into sugar in the body and really there are two types of carbs. There are the really simple carbs that turn into energy, turn into sugar in your body really quickly and then there's the complex carbs which take a lot longer to break down and won't give you so much of a, a sudden spike of sugar in your bloodstream. Now most people want to avoid those really simple carbs that are going to turn into sugar really, really quickly and give you that insulin sp uh, sugar spike and followed by the insulin spike. So what I'm talking about there is like your white bread, white pasta, um, crisps, <laughs> a lot of the nice ones, the comfort food that we crave, that we crave when our energy levels dip because they give us that instant energy. Um, those kinds of carbs, generally everyone wants to avoid. The complex carbs, on the other hand, some people do really well consuming lots of complex carbs. You may feel amazing if you're having oats for breakfast every morning and you're having whole grains throughout the day. However, some people won't. And there is definitely a process for each of us as individuals for working out what makes us feel good and what doesn't. Personally, I know I need to stay on the kind of lower end of carbohydrates um, and one of the ways I, I can kind of see this, one of the ways I know this is that if I have a big bowl of oats for breakfast, purely oats, no kind of added protein or anything like that, I can't eat that much, I feel quite full up quite quickly with it, but about an hour later I'm already starving. Okay, My body processes that food far too quickly, it doesn't give me long term sustainable energy. I also know that if I have um, a carbohydrate heavy lunch, I am getting sleepy in the afternoon. Again, that's telling me that the sugar is going into my bloodstream and there's been an insulin spike. That's telling me that these carbs are not doing me good. If I compare that to having a, a lunch that's got lots of good proteins in, lots of high quality fats, and then a small amount of carbohydrate, um, I feel so much more energized through the whole of the afternoon. And that, that's just a really simple way of knowing what's working for you and for your body. We are all unique and we are all different. So there isn't one hard and fast rule for everybody, I'm afraid. So it really is, it's about kind of tuning in, what's working for me, what doesn't work for me. So that's carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, as I said, they can still cause that peak of um, that kind of that spike of sugar and of insulin and um, the, the troughs. OK, so you need to be very aware. It's not just the impact of this added sugar, this free sugar. It is the, the carbohydrates that you're eating as well. But it's worth experimenting, playing around, figure out what works for you. So. Let's talk about the guidelines on sugar. So the World Health Organization uh, recommends that you consume a maximum, and now these are the numbers for adults, it's different for children, I won't cover that today, but it is different for children, it's much less. Um, the World Health Organization recommends that you consume a maximum of 50 grams of sugar a day. So what does that look like? That's about 10 teaspoons, about 10 teaspoons of sugar a day. Um, now, they, they also say that the best, the recommended level of sugar that you consume a day is half that. So 25 grams, about five teaspoons of sugar a day. So if you're between five and 10 teaspoons of sugar a day, you're doing okay. But they're also saying that your sugar intake should only make up 
of your energy intake for the day. So what does this mean? This is looking at calories. So that 50 gram maximum recommendation is based on you consuming 2000 calories in a day. Now everything in the body comes down to balance. It very rarely comes down to an absolute number. And I've, this is one of the reasons I find the human body absolutely fascinating. And bless him, my other half finds the human body totally overwhelming because there isn't a hard and fast rule for anything. <laughs> you know, you can't say if you weigh this much, you are healthy. Or if, you're, um, if you consume 50 grams of sugar, you will be healthy. It just doesn't work like that. It's all about creating the right kind of balance. So when it comes to sugar and sugar consumption, you want 10% of your energy or 10% of your daily calories to come from sugar as a maximum. Ideally, it'll be 5%, 10% as a maximum. So what this looks like, if you're consuming 2000 calories a day, that's 50 grams of sugar because each gram of sugar has got about four calories in it. So 2000 calories per day of energy, 10% of that is your 200 calories. So you can take 200 calories of your daily calories from sugar, which is 50 grams. If you are consuming, if you're on a low calorie diet, you've got to be consuming even less than that 50 grams. If you were consuming, and I wouldn't recommend it because you know, if you were to halve that and have a thousand calories, that's not many calories in your day. Um, and I certainly wouldn't recommend it, but if you were only consuming a thousand calories a day, 10% of that is only 100 calories. So that's only 25 grams of sugar. Otherwise, you're gonna be going above that 10% rule and, and that's gonna be taking you into the danger zone. So can you see how this is all about actually balance and putting things in to kind of context of everything else that you're putting into your body? So what are we actually counting when the World Health Organization or WHO or WHO, I don't know how you refer to it, um, what, what are we actually counting when we are talking about this 10%? Um, the World Health Organization do not include fruits. They do not include fruit, uh, sugar that you're getting from fruits in that number. We're not including sugars in fruits. Um, but it does include fruit juice, um, anything with added sugars. It includes honey um, or any of the sort of more natural sugars, anything that's been isolated out from its original source. Um, so, you know, fruit, that's absolutely fine. Go knock yourself out. I mean, you do need to still kind of have a, an overview of how of of what you're putting into your body and make sure it's all in balance with everything else. But in terms of this counting out, you, you know, your 50 grams a day, that's not including fruit. But because fruit juice is kind of processed fruit, effectively, you're blending it up and you're extracting the fiber and you're extracting this, that and the other, even if it's a natural fruit juice that you've made at home, you are isolating the sugar and the water. So that counts towards your 50 grams a day. One of the things that I do like to do with people is show kind of just how much you're consuming when you're drinking things. Um, because this is one of the places I find the most shocking. This, I think, is where people tend to use up all of their sugar. In fact, there's two places I think people tend to use up all of their sugar allocation for the day. The first one is in breakfast cereal, and I am, I'm totally against breakfast cereal, I think. In our house, we generally just stick to porridge oats for my kids, because they seem to be fueled really well with, with oats. Um, and we do have like a treat breakfast cereal as well. It's one from Dorset Cereals. It's dark chocolate with cherries and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it still works out about, it's about seven grams of sugar if you have that for breakfast. Um, which, you know, for kids, actually that is, you know, that's well enough. That is well enough sugar. Compare that to some other breakfast cereals that are aimed for children and you're looking at 20, 30, even 40 grams of sugar by the time your child is actually filled up on that breakfast cereal. So really, really pay attention to your breakfast cereals. Um, but the other place that really, really shocks me is in our drinks and what we are drinking. So we are all probably very well aware that drinks like Coca-Cola are really high in sugar. 
um, and, and Coke have capitalized on this and brought out all of these no sugar and sugar free drinks which um, my thoughts on could fill an entire um, episode in itself and maybe I will do that later on down the line. Um, but their, their regular sugar filled drink is around 35 grams of sugar for one of their 330 ml cans. Now that, that's definitely way over your kind of best target of 25 grams a day and you're getting very, very close to your 50 gram uh, maximum target for the day if you have a 330 ml can of Coke. Now, we kind of know that, it's probably not that shocking. We, we know Coke is bad, right? What you may not know is that tons of other drinks are almost if not almost as bad if not worse and the reason they tend to be worse is because we we don't realize how bad they are we don't notice how terrible they are and a really great example of this is some of the flavored waters that are out there so um, I noticed this for the first time a couple of years ago when my other half was starting to take notice of what I'd been studying and learning and when he was out, he thought, right, I'm going to pick up a bottle of, I, I, need, I need a drink. He was out, he was buying lunch, and he grabbed, um, I think it was the Volvic Touch of Fruit a couple of years ago. And he, it was a, it was a big bottle, um, but, you know, it's just flavoured water. It's just got added lemon and lime. That's got to be good for you, right? Drunk the whole bottle. I think it was about 750 mils. Over the course of the day, drunk the whole bottle. Um, and it was only afterwards that he thought to check how much sugar was in there. Um, and when he figured out how much sugar was in that 750 ml bottle, it worked out to over 40 grams of sugar. Now it did say in very small writing on the bottle that a serving is 250 ml, but I mean, come on, you buy one of those sports bottles of water, you're just gonna drink the lot. You don't stop and think, oh, I better stop after 250 ml because that's a serving size. Um, so it, it can be really, really shocking. And I looked up the numbers this morning just before I, I did this live so that I was up to date on this. Um, and currently uh, online you can buy, I've just had a quick look in Ocado where I do my shopping. You can buy the Volvic Touch of Fruit bottles. They come in a 500 ml bottle and still they say the, the serving size is 250 ml. And it says so per serving size it's 11 point five grams of sugar. Great. Who is going to drink half of a 500 ml bottle? No one. Everyone drinks all of it. So you are drinking 23 grams of sugar just by drinking water. How crazy is that? You've almost hit that target of the best amount of sugar that you consume and you have had at least half of your max, almost half of your maximum amount of sugar in one day. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Just for drinking water. So they are definitely the two places I would urge you to go and start looking for sugar right away. Don't start demonising fruit just yet unless you've got major, major issues, your weight is a really, really big issue, you feel like you've got kind of hormones going haywire. Um, don't start demonising fruit yet. Start with the the hidden sugars all of those added sugars in your ready meals and definitely start looking at cereals and start looking at the drinks that you are drinking those flavored waters particularly are shocking they're really really surprising because we just don't expect it we think we're making the healthy choice and we drink something that is just laden absolutely laden with free sugars that are going to be having a massive impact on your hormones and I think as well, this is a really important thing to start working on with our children right away. Um, you know, our, our sweet our sweet teeth, sweet teeth, is that like the plural of sweet tooth? <laughs> our sweet tooth is, you know, really, it really comes from childhood and what we're used to eating as and drinking as children. So definitely have a look at what you're giving to your kids as well. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover today. Um, sugar is a really, really detailed topic and I could go off on so many different tangents with it. And what I really wanted to do was just give you a really good overview of what's really going on when you're consuming sugar. So just to highlight, to, to kind of summarise the highlights here, don't demonise all sugar. Your brain does need some to thrive, but don't overload it. And if you're going to consume sugar, consume it within complex carbohydrates that your body actually has to do a bit of work to get that sugar 
out of them. Consume it in fruits and vegetables that have so many amazing phytonutrients in there that fuel your body in lots of other ways as well. Really focus on reducing down those added sugars and that means paying attention to the labels of all the foods that you're buying. I think you might be surprised at some of the things that sugar's hiding in. I hope that's helpful. Do comment below with questions. I'm always happy to give you more information if you want it. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.